So we're gonna do a demonstration on placing a lateral saphenous catheter on this little girl here. I've got Taylor and Aaliyah helping me out with this demonstration today. The big difference between our saphenous catheter placements and our cephalic placements is the anatomical structure of the leg. The rear legs are a lot more angular, so placement is a little bit more difficult and then taping requires very good supportive measurements. So we're gonna give that a try today and see what we get. All right, so we have our patient in lateral recumbency. I'm gonna aim for this lateral saphenous vessel that we'll see here once we shave. Uh, Taylor's gonna occlude for me when we're ready, but the first step is gonna be shaving the hair away. So we can see our vessel pretty clearly. And our dog patients, they have this nice little divot here. So what I'm actually gonna do is use this finger on the bottom and push up just a little bit to create a nice level playing field so I don't have this divot that I have to work with. Once we've got everything cleared to visualize, I'm gonna um, sterilely prep the area. So I'm gonna use my uh, two forms of disinfectant and I'm gonna do a surgical prep, which is inside to out, not crossing back over the middle. I know it's cold. Do that three times. All right, I've got hold of my leg and I feel secure. I'm gonna have Taylor hold off so that vessel extends up a little bit. I've selected to place a 24 gauge catheter in this patient. For fluid therapy, that's a little, a little small, um, but our patient here is a frequent flyer, so we're gonna try to create as little scarring as we can for the short purpose that we need this catheter today. My stylet's gonna come with a little backing on it, which I'm gonna remove. And as I go to place, I wanna stick low on the vessel, bevel up at about a 45 degree angle. Okay, so I'm at a 45 degree angle, bevel up low on the leg, make a little stab. As I poke, I should get flash back of blood into that stylet once I'm in the vessel. Once I get a nice flow of blood, I can feed my catheter off my stylet. This time my assistant can let go for pressure and apply gentle pressure at the tip of the catheter there. I'm gonna secure a port to close that end. You're good, thank you. I'm gonna gently flush to confirm I'm in. I can both see the white flushing of the vessel as it expands. My assistant can also feel for the pulsing. Now I'm gonna tape my catheter in. I'm gonna start off with a longer skinny piece of tape upside down and underneath that catheter. The trick to saphenous catheters, because of the angle of this leg, I can't just go straight as the tape goes. I need to go around at the angle of the leg. So my inclination is to go this way at that joint, but I'm actually gonna angle slightly to get around that skinny part of the leg. I'm gonna take a wider piece covering about half of what I already have in place, and then going up the leg. You will have to combat a little bit as the leg gets wider. Make sure you're laying your tape flat with as few wrinkles as possible. Then I'm gonna take a short skinny piece, sticky side up, under the T-port, crossing over to apply some gentle pressure back up towards the vessel in the leg to keep that catheter in. And then one more piece over everything to clean it up, but I'm actually gonna go below this joint here to anchor it. And then around the rest of the leg to secure it. Due to that and the fact that my tape was a little short, I still have this dangly bit. So I'm gonna use one more piece of tape over the top here, where I can then use this to secure my T-port to the patient.
Once everything is secure, I'm gonna give a gentle flush. I'll see this blood pulse in and we should be able to feel it as well. And then once I do, I'm gonna clamp that off so we don't get continued backflow and either connect my IV line or another uh, end port for flow here. Because of this angle and the fact that it's on a joint or a flexible point on the leg, sometimes with these catheters to both secure them and prevent them from being positional, you need to apply some additional bandage layers just to, to make that a little bit more rigid. We won't do that until we know that there's a defined issue with that. So this demonstration showed you placing a lateral saphenous catheter in a dog. The biggest challenge and difference between our saphenous catheters and our cephalics is the angle of our leg. We have to adjust our taping as well as our maintenance, watching these things to make sure they're not positional or occluding uh, when we have these in place. But we can use this for fluids or drug therapy. So once therapy has been completed on this patient, we can remove this IV catheter. Our biggest concern is we want to make sure we cut as far away from the catheter as we can. So this catheter was placed on the lateral surface, so I'm going to cut on the medial surface to remove this tape. I'm going to use my bandage scissors and its little shovel end to get under that piece of tape, slowly work it away from the skin and cut. Once I've cut all the way through the tape, I can pull it up gently off the skin. Because I've removed the hair all the way around, I'm not gonna be pulling on hair. I'm gonna pull back to my insertion site, take my little bit of gauze, pull my catheter out. I want a compressive bandage, something that's not too terribly snug, but just gentle enough to allow that space to clot. This only needs to stay on for about an hour. I'm gonna leave a tab at the end of the bandage roll for either myself or the client to be able to remove that. 